Hello, my name is Michael Bailey. Welcome to my PowerPoint presentation. Today I will be explaining a case study regarding a CTA chest with a PE protocol. Alright, so first I will tell you about the patient and her symptoms. Then I will talk about the imaging options for those symptoms she has. Then we'll go into detail about the CTA chest and what the PE protocol entails. And we'll end with the exam results and how the patient is going to be treated. Okay, so the patient we're dealing with today is a 27-year-old female who happens to be 33 weeks pregnant. Now, the patient was recently hospitalized within the last few weeks with uh, preeclampsia. And this time she went in to see her primary care provider with symptoms of some chest pain and some shortness of breath. Now, these symptoms worried her provider, who suggested that she seek further evaluation at the local emergency department. The ER provider ordered multiple imaging exams to determine whether the patient had some sort of a blood clot. Now, this is where we end up meeting the patient, is when they come down to the imaging department and we begin a workup for a possible pulmonary embolism is what they're going to be looking for. Now, briefly, a PE is a blood clot in an artery in the lung. The blood clot is going to block the blood flow to the parts of the lung, obstructing any perfusion to the alveoli and potentially causing lung infarction. Now, most often the blood clot forms in the veins of the legs and then travels to the heart and then the lungs where it then becomes lodged. Now, this patient's risk factors for developing the PE include her recent hospitalization and pregnancy. The patient's ER workup starts with a chest x-ray and lower extremity ultrasound. The chest x-ray is performed to check for any obvious causes of her symptoms, like maybe pneumonia or like a pneumothorax. A lower extremity ultrasound, on the other hand, is ordered to rule out any possible DVT, as the patient was recently hospitalized and has leg swelling. Um, in pregnancy, this increases her chances for developing a DVT. Even though the provider may be worried about a pulmonary embolism, they will usually do the lower extremity ultrasound first. Um, this is so they can avoid radiating the patient and the fetus. As the treatment for a positive DVT, if seen on the ultrasound, would be the same if they were diagnosed with a PE. Both of these exams happen to come back negative on this patient. The provider now wants to check for a pulmonary embolism, so there are two imaging studies that they can do from this point. One is a CTA chest and the other is a VQ scan, which is a, some kind of a um, nuclear medicine exam. The provider opts for a CTA chest with the PE protocol as the VQ scan is not recommended for pregnant women because of the higher dose of radiation received by the fetus. patient has now arrived in our CT department. She is asked about her prior imaging history, if she's had a CT before, and we learn that she has never had any kind of a CT before and has no known drug allergies and no allergies to any iodine or shell shellfish. Because of this, we know she will not need to be pre-medicated for the CTA but we will still monitor her for signs and symptoms of any allergic reaction during and following the exam. Now, prior to the exam, uh, we inform the patient about the IV contrast, what to expect when the contrast is injected and any possible reactions to watch for. Uh, we then explain her positioning and that she's going to need to follow some breathing instructions during the exam. She will then be asked to remove any jewelry or metal um, in the scanning area, like necklaces and bra. Um, coming from the emergency department, she will usually already be in a gown and have this stuff removed, but definitely a good idea to double check as sometimes they forget the bra. Uh, because the patient is pregnant, we will be using radiation reducing techniques, such as a wraparound shield around the abdomen and a breast shield as well. 
we will also decrease um, some MA, KVP, and slice thickness to decrease the effective dose to the patient and the fetus. Now on this slide I have a picture of one of the breast shields that the patients can wear. Um, on the left you can see it on the patient and on the right image you can see what it actually looks like in our scanned image. So it doesn't show up too much. Here is an example of one of the wraparound shields uh, used for patients who are pregnant. In this slide, these, uh, these two images show the difference in the quality when using a low-dose protocol, which is lowering the MA or KVP or slice thickness for pregnant patients. As you can see from left to right, there is a very similar quality. This patient does not have a PE on this particular image, uh, but the left image shows the standard protocol with standard radiation, while the image on the right is going to show the lower-dose protocol. All right, so now it's time to get into the exam itself. The patient is gonna be starting out lying down on the table on her back. She's gonna be aiming feet first into the scanner. Uh, we can use a positioning bolster under the knees for any kind of comfort. Um, she's gonna be needing to keep her arms above her head while we are actually performing the scan. Luckily, she came to us with a 20 gauge IV in the arm and she's agreeable to receiving the IV contrast. So we're going to start our exam by performing AP and lateral scout images from the lung apices to just below the lung bases. Um, once we're ready, we are going to be injecting contrast. Basically, this is going to be using a bolus tracking technique of some kind. Uh, this is going to ensure that the proper location of our contrast is in the pulmonary arteries for the scan. The scanner will take low-dose images of the region of interest, which is going to be the pulmonary artery, about just below the carina, um, until contrast reaches the desired location. Um, then the scan is going to begin, and for this patient, the scan is going to go from lung bases to lung apices in a single breath hold. Now, because she's short of breath, it helps going from the bases to the apices to reduce any motion artifacts. Now, after the scan is complete, we're going to do the recons uh, with a coronal sagittal MIPS, and then those are going to be sent off to the radiologist. Um, no oral contrast is needed for this particular exam, although there have been studies that have shown that drinking oral contrast with barium, it can actually reduce uh, radiation dose to the fetus by being in the abdomen. Now, once the radiologist has received the images, they will dictate the images. Uh, we had optimal contrast enhancement, which is going to aid in the radiologist dictation. Um, the radiologist results are as follows. Images show an acute thrombus within the left lower posterior basal segmental artery. Uh, so basically we have a confirmed pulmonary embolism in the left posterior lung. Uh, the radiologist dictation does, does not recommend any additional imaging for this patient at this time. Here is an image of the actual patient's PE. As you can see marked by the arrow it is located in the posterior aspect of the left lung. These are some examples from our class slideshow of recons done for the CTHS PE protocol. We can see the dark gray where contrast should be is where the pulmonary embolism lies. All right, so now that the patient has been diagnosed with a PE, the patient has been admitted to the hospital to begin treatment. Um, the treatment for the PE is anti anticoagulation for at least six months. This patient was prescribed heparin injections. The usual course for treatment would be to bridge to an oral anticoagulant, but this is not recommended until after delivery for pregnant mothers. Um, once the treatment is completed, it is possible that the ordering provider may want a repeat CTHS to ensure the resolution of the blood clot. 
Now this completes my presentation on the CTA chest with a PE protocol. Hopefully you've gained some insight about the scan and uh, this will be beneficial when you come across it in the clinical side. Um, thank you for watching.